Hello and welcome back to Land 6340, 3D Rendering with View, lecture number 4. Today we're going to be doing a lot of organic modelling of rocks and cliffs um, inside of View using um, displaced surfaces. We'll be kind of expanding a lot on what we did last week on, on displaced surfaces. And we're also going to look at um, a little brief introduction to booleans and, um, within View, and then um, metablobs and hyperblobs. And we're also going to look at creating our own material libraries and object libraries. And um, I'm also going to do a separate video, which I don't know if you've watched it already, um, about the assignment. So um, yeah, let's get into it. Okay, so we've got a new scene here, just the default um, atmosphere. And we're going to create a sphere into our scene here. Um, actually, we'll just leave it 6 metres by 6 metres. Actually, I want to kind of stretch this out a little bit. So this is going to be the first rock that we create is, is basically working with what we did last week with displaced surfaces but we're just going to go into a little bit more depth. So if we go and edit this material okay, and we're going to look at displacement mapping but um, first we just want to go to the bump map and we're going to go and edit this function. Okay, So just, um, remember this is the second tab, bumps, right click in here, edit function. So we've seen this is what's producing our colour which isn't very exciting at the moment. And this is what's producing our bumps. So we're going to load in a fractal. Okay, in fact, I'm going to change this fractal from a simple fractal to um, the fast Perlin fractal. It's, um, it's a, the, the math of it works quite nicely. It's a kind of effect that um, we're after. Okay, and what we want to do is okay, we need to get a few more features showing here. Um, but first, I'm just going to go OK and hit displacement map. Alright, so now we're displacing the surface. Um, actually, we'll bump this up to about 2. No, maybe not. Maybe 1. Okay. Now, it's actually, see, it's exploding out and we're not getting a huge amount of features on here. Let's have a look at what it renders like. Renders, yeah, looks like a big roundish pebble. But we need far more features than that. So, let's go and edit this function and we'll see now that our our fast pearl and fractal when we turn displace on it's gone and connected up to displace as well which is very nice and we've got all our controls here so first thing we do bump gain right up to 10 and drop our largest feature right down to let's say about I don't know three we just going to get some features forming yep and let's go okay I think we're just going to reduce this down Okay, it's not looking... Yeah, we're getting there. Let's go edit function again. Okay, let's, um, let's adjust this roughness. No, it's still not getting the look I want. Okay, that's looking a bit better. Let's render that. No, it's still not getting the look I want. Okay. That's starting to work a bit better. Let's just play around with this depth. Oh, I went a bit too low on that now. So as we increase this, you can see up here in the preview we're starting to get a lot more form. That's more like it. Okay, now I've got another cool trick. At the moment we're stuck on object parametric, okay, which is probably actually causing me a few issues. Um, mostly um, how extreme it looks. So let's change it. Now we could change this to object standard, okay, you can see it's um, ended up a lot finer detail. Or ultimately, or alternatively, I should say, um, we could change this to world standard. Now, if you remember, world standard means that the, the math is kind of happening within over our entire world, and wherever our object is is where it gets applied. So let's just go edit this function. I just want to increase that largest feature again, just so we so we go up to about. There we go, that's looking pretty cool. Yeah, and that's looking a lot more rock-like. Okay, let's just reduce our roughness. That's cool, maybe just clean up just a little bit more. Okay, now we're looking like we've got a rock. Let's render this. All right. So we're looking a lot more, well, rock-like. <laughs> Um, I'm just actually going to change my rendering mode to radiosity. Um, the reason for that, I know I've said that that um, reduces your render times, but 
we should find that um, it still renders nice and quick anyway. However, you can kind of see I'm getting a lot more definition. Okay, I can really start to see what the surface of this looks like. Now, um, this is looking very rock-like. I suppose all we really need to do is if we just edit this function. So we, sorry, so this edit the material and um, let's let's color it. Okay, at the moment it hasn't really got any texture happening. And um, what I'm going to do is just actually right-click on here and go edit function. Okay, and we want to replace all this. Actually, let's cheat. Let's right-click here and go load function. Okay, this is a whole bunch of predefined ones. And you'll see there's all sorts of things for bumps and basic and all that sort of carry on. And what we're after, I think, which would look good, is actually if you go to this color productions, um, one of these looks kind of interesting. Um, a gray beige fractal based on two color production function. Okay, that sounds nice. Okay. So now we've just got a little bit more color happening in here. We can go in and edit this function, of course. And we can see what it's done. Is that's kind of interesting. Um, we don't really need that. Let's just get rid of it. it. Should really be attached to this, actually. Not that there is any alpha anyway going on, but so I can just ignore it. And what have we got happening? So we've got a fast pearl and fractal, just like the one we're using for our, our rock surface. Um, so if we want to get a little bit more variation in this, okay, we can increase our gain. Okay, and decrease our largest feature. Yeah, that's kind of a little bit more interesting. Okay, and we can go to here. Now this is what, it's changing all these white colors and black colors um, into these two shades of beige. Um, there's lots of ways of doing this. Um, it's actually no different to using color map, okay, which I prefer, because then you can just load in a color map, and it's going to map all these black and white colors to any of these colors. So let's say we go with shades of green and gray. That sounds interesting. Let's go OK. Mm. Yeah. OK. That's looking kind of cool. Let's render that and see what we've got. All right, we're looking pretty rock-like. Be nice actually if we had maybe increase it a little bit more. The actual overall displacement, this depth here. Let's increase that to about two. Right, let's go even further. Even more. Okay, we're starting to get something that looks a lot more random now. See, it doesn't look like our sphere so much. And what's cool, because we set this to world standard, you watch what happens when we go and move this rock we get a different view of it. Oh, we get, well, we get a different rock. See that? Move it. Different shaped rock. Every time we move it, different shaped rock. Okay, because remember the math is happening throughout our entire world. So that means if I go and option drag, okay, so I'm going to option drag a whole bunch of these, I can make myself a whole little library of different rocks. Okay, and then like a little bit of green sort of growing on them. Actually, I'm going to work on this a little bit more. This, they're, they're a nice shape, but they still don't look very rock-like. The surfaces are too smooth, and I could, I could adjust the smoothness, the, the roughness, but that's going to make the whole rock shape different. What I want to do is just add some noise to this, and so that's exactly what I'm going to do. Actually, let's just bring up the material editor, and we're going to go and edit this material. Okay, so here's our bump production. So what I want to do is I just want to add noise to this. And the easiest way of doing that is we'll just add a new fractal. Okay, so here's a new fractal. Okay, it's still the fast Perlian one, but we've got a whole lot of other ones. We could add grain, maybe. Not really what I'm after. Um, simple fractal. Yeah, maybe. Um, variable noise fractal. That sounds more like me. All right, let's get this. Looking a little bit more, the largest features down a little bit. I want to try and get it quite noisy. 
There we go. Looks like a little bit more like the bumps on a rock. Okay, and there's lots of things in here we can play with, so let's increase the roughness. Okay, that's looking pretty cool. So what I want to do now is add this noise to this. And so what we need to use out of all these, we're slowly working through this, out of all these, we want to add this little blender here. Okay, actually I think if you hover over it, it says combiner. Um, when you put it on your scene, it says blender. We're going to blend the altitudes of this with the altitudes of this. And then we're going to pull this out and plug the displacement into there. Oh, and the bump as well. We want the same thing happening for the bump. Cool. All right. At the moment, what it's doing is it's blending these two together. So it is having an effect, but we, we want to add. So now what it's doing is it's adding this noise to this image. In fact, I might just show you this little guy here because he's quite handy. If we select this, so here's here's the surface if you like. So it's like this is cutting through our mathematical model in the X, Y, and Z. Okay, so this is our fast purlin. This one here is our variable noise. Okay, so you can see it's very rough. And you can see this is kind of smooth. And when we're adding the two together, you can see we're adding these little bumps to this purlin noise. Okay, pretty cool, eh? So there's our noise, the surface, add the two together, and we've got this nice microscopic sort of bumps. And we can play around with this. So if we go and change the ratio, we can have a lot more of that um, that variable noise being added, or none at all. Okay, so you can kind of just come in here, maybe you just want to, yeah, maybe that's what we want. So we've got kind of a little bit of surface noise. There we go, okay, Oops. let's close this now. And we're going to hit render on that. Okay, if we decide, mm, maybe that was a little bit too extreme. I just wanted to say, see it's looking a little, a little too bumpy. So we'll just go in here. Now, this kind of gets a little bit annoying sometimes. When you go into here, you know, and it's like, okay, well, I can adjust the size of my bumps by sliding this slider. Which one was it? Uh, the largest feature. I can go over here and adjust my noise by adjusting, you know, um, probably the gain or the roughness, you know. And so what I want to do is I want to bring all these into one place, okay? And then I've got the ratio between the two. So. View has a very cool thing where we can publish these. So let's publish, and what I mean by publish is we'll see it in our material editor. So let's publish um, largest feature. Okay, so if we right click on here, we can go publish parameter, and we're going to give it a name. So we'll call it, um, let's call it, we can make this up. And this is kind of our rock lumpiness I suppose you call it. Um, is that a word? Lumpiness? I don't know. Cool. I'm going to go OK. And we're going to call this maybe this this one here. So let's publish that. And yeah, publish parameter and we'll call that. Um, actually we'll just call that roughness, eh? That's kind of what I mean. And I also want to um, publish this ratio. Um, in fact, let's just call that blender ratio. That will do. And we go. Okay. Now, what happens is we've got this little extra tab here, and we've got rock lumpiness, roughness, and blender ratio. Okay. So that means that I can just come in here and go. Oh, well, actually, let's just drop that down a bit, and we can see it all updating, nice and live. And we've got a really cool. Uh, material with its own published parameters. Yeah, and so I can go, well, actually, let's. I like this being really rough, but I don't want much of it added to my surface. Okay. And um, remember, we can expand on this window. It's looking kind of cool. Maybe it's a little too rough. Maybe we'll just drop that back a little bit. 
Yeah, that's looking kind of cool. See, so we've kind of got this real microscopic sort of rough surface going on. Let me just bring that up just a little bit more. Okay, that's just going to add a little bit more to it. Yeah, is my rock lumpy enough? Well, what happens if we drop it down? Yeah. Hmm. It's not really. I'll kind of want that. So I'll start going too big. Yeah, not really. Don't know if we've named it very well. Rock lumpiness. <laughs> I suppose essentially that's what we're doing. Okay, that's looking kind of cool. Alright, let's render our rocks now. Don't render. Now they look like awesome rocks. Now, another cool thing with it being object, uh, sorry, world standard, what that means is that if this rock intersects with these two rocks, you watch what happens. Gonna render that pretty much a seamless join across our entire surface because it's the same mathematical model that 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 noise and everything is all being applied to the world it means that when it's calculating the surface it's going to line up perfectly with the next one we're not seeing like you know the rock up here and then all of a sudden it's down there okay even if we go and yeah make this one maybe a bit taller Okay, it should. Done this right. Should all meld together really nicely. Okay, I'm getting a little bit of a join there. Okay, but not perfect. And I do have tricks to make it perfect. So I need to make a little bit of a beeline now. So let's let's look away from that, and we'll look over here, off into the distance and talk about um, two things. First, I just want to start off with something kind of unrelated, um, but you kind of need to know it because it's background knowledge. Um, I'm just going to create um, a cube. Actually, we'll just pop that in front of our camera. Oops, I didn't mean to scale that. Um, view, like a lot of programs, um, can do Boolean operations. You'll see where I'm going with this. So, Shift D is good. Um, so what's a Boolean operation? Um, so some of you have done my CAD class you already know. Um, I'm not going to change this to view. That just means I'm moving it around relative to my view, which is kind of convenient in this case. Let's say I wanted to subtract this cube from this cube. Okay, so I'm going to select these two together. Um, so if you remember from um, land 6230, um, the CAD paper, we called it solid element operations. Um, really the Boolean operations is a better, um, a better description. We're going to do a Boolean difference, and boom. Oh, now, actually I've got this run the wrong way, but it's actually easy to do. I've done a subtraction, okay, so if you call it a, sub, um, a difference. If we actually swap the order of this, uh, there we go, that's what I actually intended to do. So you can see that we can do a subtraction. So the first one in here is the one that gets subtracted, which is kind of cool. It means that if I add other objects to this, so let's go and grab this cube and we'll pop that in there as well. Okay, oops. Probably not help that it's engulfing the entire thing. There we go. Okay, so every cube that I add to this, is going to subtract from the first cube. Okay, so we've made I don't know, a piece of architecture. Okay, and there's other ways we can do this. So we could also, um, in fact, if we go and click on here, I think we can just right click and go edit object. No, you can't. Sorry. We can ungroup this though. If we go Command U, we'll ungroup them. Still got them selected, and we can choose other things. So we could do a Boolean um, intersection. So we'll only show the areas that, of it that intersect, which in this case isn't any of them. 
and let's just dump one of these just so it makes it a lot easier okay so that's where cube one and cube two are intersecting each other okay we could also um, add them together which basically just means that the two cubes will be like one big solid which most of the time you just stick them inside each other anyway it doesn't really matter all right so where am i going with this well actually I'll let, let's leave that there um, we'll ungroup them though there's another thing in here called a meta blob okay it's a meta blob and what a meta blob is um, actually meta blob has been around for a very long time you used to only be able to do it with spheres I um, mean a lot of programs are still like that you can only do meta blobs with spheres um, but in view we can do it with any geometry or model or anything it's pretty cool what it's doing is if we just go command E on this um, you can see here we've got an envelope distance um, so that is basically controlling it's kind of like as if these cubes have got um, an influence on the shape of these objects see it's kind of so um, they're kind of I don't know um, kind of influencing the shape rather oops I don't want to do new I want a new cube I don't know what I was thinking then so let's go and put this other cube in here as well come on all right so grab that cube and move that cube move these all around now what's cool with this if we go and turn around again all right and we look at these these spheres that we've got over here right Remember we had this problem with this intersection and it looks like they're intersecting. So let's just connect all these, let's select them all and go object create meta blob. Okay. And if we go actually the shortcuts command E will edit the object. And so now we can use this envelope distance to dictate um, how this all works. Mixed objects contribution. Actually, I think you're meant to do this on a per object. So if you go select one of these and go Command E. In fact, you'll see also we've got another thing. So here's the intensity and the envelope distance. So the intensity should reduce the intensity. Oh, I'll grab the wrong one. I'll grab the cube. <laughs> so you can kind of see how. This is, this one here is what we want to. So let's say we want this one to be less of an influence. So we can reduce its intensity. And maybe that one's 100%, and then this one has also got less intensity. Cool. And then maybe the middle one. Um, let's increase the envelope distance. We should. Well, it's not going to have much of an effect, but look at it. Okay, so now this one's got more influence over the shape than the two end ones. And you can see. that we've got a nice seamless shape to our rock okay pretty cool and it's all being dictated by our um, our displacement and of course it's world space if we move it we'll get a different iteration of it Ooh, look at that So a pretty cool way of making um, rock features. And it gets cooler, of course, because let's say I wanted to make a cliff. Easy peasy. I'm just going to grab a big wall here and drag this out. Make it kind of big and tall like that. And we'll add that to our combination. Come on. There we go. Oh, sorry, this one over here, isn't it? In fact, I'm just going to delete that other one. We've finished looking at him. Oops, it's got a different material. <laughs> and we'll actually see that it's actually blending from one material to the other, which is kind of cool, but not really what I wanted. But it also just shows the awesomeness of this. Let's see, how's that for just awesome? Okay. Meaning that you could 
have some sort of sculptural thing morphing out of rock into something with a lot more form. Um, hang on, if we just go into here, I'm just going to copy this material and then go down to cube and go paste. There we go, now we've got the whole, the same material over the entire thing. We can even do subtractions. So let's say we go and grab this cube, right? I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger. And we're going to add this to our meta blob. Come on. And cube 7 though, if I go command E, it's going to be subtractive. Now, this is going to be a little bit dependent on, because we've got this displaced surface. So the two are kind of competing against each other. Okay, and um, in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go edit, I'm going to um, copy this material, right? Did I end up with two copies of it before? No. And I'm going to paste it on this material. Oh, sorry, paste material. Okay, and then I'm going to edit this material. Hopefully, I'm not sure if this is going to work or not. Um, I want to make this one darker. Okay, like as if. Yes, it looks like it worked. So I should have two materials now. I've got my light version and my dark version. And if we render this. Yeah, I thought that would happen. Because of our displaced surface, of course, it's kind of going over the top of it all. We just kind of move our camera around a little bit. Okay, we could make this this hole a bit bigger. There we go. Well, I don't think that's doing very good justice to what's actually happening. But we're getting a pretty spectacular result now. Let's just go Command E on this. We've got no. Um, we could also let's say we took this dark material. Cool, and we'll we'll um, place it on this as well. And then we could have like see it's like dark rock going into light rock. Everything else is the same, but you know you got a huge amount of control over this. The only difference with these two materials is it's one's got a color override. It's not blending very nicely in here though, is it? Which is a bit odd. It could just be that our rendering quality is quite low. We go render final, render to screen. 1600 by 900, hit render. Alright, and um, there's our render. It's not really blending the two materials together very well, is it? So, yeah, I don't think I'd recommend that, to be honest. I don't think I've ever done it anyway. Um, okay, so how would we um, reset it? Pretty easy. We just drag and drop this to these cubes here, and to that one. There we go. Looking much better. Okay, I think our lumpiness needs to be adjusted, doesn't it? Not a problem. Let's make our lumpiness a bit smaller. We just go to, oops, not that material. Hmm. Let's turn that, if you just go. Yeah. Claps all, uh, assign to all, that's what we want. There we go. It's got one material, oh, I see I accidentally had these guys, it doesn't matter. All right, edit material. Let's go to our published parameters and reduce the rock lumpiness here. And that one's not really doing us any favours, is it? Cool. I think that um, it's not really working at this sort of scale, but it would make a pretty cool cliff. So let's just get rid of our hole. There we go. All right. 
Um, I might just um, kind of grab some of these and rotate them and spin them around a bit. Just make it sort of look like a the bottom of the cliff. Maybe take this big cube and slide that over a bit. Um, let's do local coordinates. Which is that? That's that one. I'll squash that down a bit. Oops. All right. Let's scale. And we could just take the entire thing and just make the entire thing a bit bigger, eh? There we go. So now we've kind of got like a rock. A rocky cliff sort of thing going on. So we could insert that maybe into the side of a terrain that we've kind of sculpted out. Oh, hang on. Let's just close it. I just want to put this back to draft quality. In fact, let's escape. Let's just render it down here. Okay, it's looking a little bit lumpy, so let's just reduce the size of our bumps. And get bumps, we'll just drop that maybe to three, mm, four. Nope, maybe three was good. Three and. Bump that up a little bit. Uh, get a little bit of rush here. Three point eight. That's a fiddly sort of game. Cool. We can um, make the surface more accurate. See, we're kind of getting it a little bit angular on the edges. Um, this is where we do a quality boost. So let's just do a quality boost of one. Okay, and we'll render that off. Okay, and you can see our surfaces are getting a little bit. I think maybe the base fractal could do with a little bit more noise, but that's not too bad. All right. And of course, if you don't like it, you just move the entire thing over. And we'll get a slightly different version. Probably the final thing I would do with this is hmm, maybe add an ecosystem to it. I haven't really talked about ecosystems. Um, so we'll do a little brief talk. Um, I'll talk more in depth on ecosystems. But at this stage, um, I'm just going to add um, just some tiny little plants to my surface, so let's say um, yeah, dry weeds. Oh, and we can go populate. And we're getting dry weeds all over it. Um, yeah, I don't really want to go into this too much, but I'm going to say let's just do it on the top. So let's go clear and populate again. In fact, presence, um, slope range. So let's say, yeah, let's say you let it grow at any altitude, but I only want you on a very flat surface. Where's that one? Is oh, that zero? Zero to thirty-five, and we'll do that. Let's see, paint. 13 instances, we need more than that. Increase our density. Again, I mean, I'm not that keen on probably because we've got quite a rough surface. There we go. 
Now it is important. See this um, under density. No, sorry, under our surface. We've got bumps. You have to make sure that this move ecosystem instance is on. Otherwise, if you have that switched off, and maybe this is the look you're trying to go for. I don't know why, but it will actually try and put these ecosystems onto the original shape of the meta blob. Okay, which means that you'll end up with things kind of sticking out and floating and uh, on areas which look a bit odd. So just make sure that you go in here and you say move ecosystem instance. So that means it will move the eco or the plants onto the new displaced surface. Yeah, we will do a session on um, ecosystems, um, but we'll render that off at a nice quality and let's have a look at it. And final. Yep, actually I might just do it 800 by 450 and hit render. Actually I'm going to stop that because I think I forgot. You can probably tell me. But I think I forgot to um, repopulate that. There we go. Because you have to repopulate it after you've changed um, that move ecosystems thing. Actually, I might just increase the density just a little bit more as well. Populate. There we go. Yeah, it's looking a little bit cooler. Hit OK. Hit Render. And I'll speed this up. Alright, now that's looking pretty spectacular. Awesome. Anyway, we just... Actually, the auto exposure is on, which I never really liked. There we go. So, that's a pretty cool material. I like that one. I'm going to save it into my library. You'll probably see it in one of my projects in the future. So, go into here, edit the material. Okay, um, we're going to call that, what are we going to call that? Um, we're going to call that uh, Cliff with Weeds. Okay, we're going to save that. Oh, hang on, is it? Cool. Um, actually, I'm going to call this as well. I'm going to call this weeds. And we're going to call this um, rock. Always looks better like that, doesn't it? Um, save. And it's going to be called weeds. Um, cliff with weeds, sorry. Oh, hang on, just make sure. Have I done that right? Sometimes, you'll be really careful because if I click on that and hit save, it will save that. So we want to save the whole lot. So just make sure it has actually got that. For some reason, it's not picking up on the full name of it. Cliff with weeds. Copy that and paste it in here. Yeah, lecture four. Land 6340 2013. Something like that. Eh? You can put all sorts of notes in there. It's a good idea to put notes in there. Alright, hit save. And we've got another plant in our library. Or another material, sorry, in our library. And this one is pretty funky because we can add it to all sorts of things. Yeah. Um we could apply it to a rock, uh, to a cube. However, the same thing's going going to affect us. This is what happened um, when we had the three spheres sitting next to each other. So if I just turn around and look at that, all right, I can go to my. Um, oh, I'll just go right click in here, go load a material, and here you go, cliff with weeds. See, it says lecture four, land six, three, four, yeah, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay. Um, yes, I want to populate the ecosystem now. However, what you might find happens, it might be disguised by the fact that our, it is, our edges quite often almost pull away from the, from the surface. It's not, actually, it's not really happening. But just be aware of it. Sometimes you get really odd things happening on these boundaries. So if that's happening, it's better just to turn it into a hyper blob and um, and that will smooth off the edges and you won't get any ripping or tearing along the edges. 
Okay, the more extreme your depth is, so if we went in here and said, right, um, this bump depth is 5. And then let's go extreme, let's say 10, because that will definitely destroy it. I like to test things to destruction. It's actually, it's actually holding up pretty well, but you can see what's happening is this surface is um, being applied and it's then tearing away from this surface. Okay. So if that happens, um, best solution is just select it, the object, um, create, uh, sorry, metablob, not, we haven't got into hyperblobs yet. Um, in fact, I'm going to say don't populate um, now just because I want to see that the edges do actually work perfectly now. Okay, so it now goes across the edges really nicely. If you compare that to what we were looking at before, okay, see, edges all broken up, edges aren't. Actually, I should really be comparing it to that one. See? So if we unmetablob that, easy enough, you just ungroup it. Still got the same material attached. Oh, not that render zone. This one. Yeah, you can see those corners and edges aren't really working. Is, oh, great crash. That's all right, we've saved everything anyway. All right, so a little system crash, but yeah, I'm finished. Okay, so I had a little system crash, um, but back now. So, um, one last thing I just want to talk about before we leave here um, is we can um, bake this to polygons. Now, what does that mean? At the moment, this is um, it's doing a, um, a, a sort of a mathematical model. But once we really like, you know, this rock right here, okay, I'm I'm liking this rock and I want to keep it. Okay, so I think this is one that doesn't have the plants on it. Um, so once I've got it looking just as I want it, so let's just put just a quick little render of this guy. So that's one of my my rocks. It looks a bit like a snail or something, doesn't it? It looks a bit weird actually. I might just move it over a little bit. Let's try it over here. Oops, lost my rock. Where is it? There. No, still don't like it. Might make it go a little bit flatter. Shift D to drop. Okay, so that's my rock. What I'm going to do is right, uh, left click on this, go okay, right click, and we're going to go edit object, okay, or command E. Oh, sorry, no, we don't want to edit object, sorry, we want to go right click, object, bake to polygons. Okay, and we can choose how much detail. So this is, you know, two and a half million, probably too many polygons. So let's drop this down to. 38,000 polygons, that sounds nice. Hit OK, and what will happen is that it will turn it into a modelled rock. This modelled rock has its own surface and everything, and it it's no longer displaced, and in fact, well, it shouldn't be. If I edit this material, you should see that the displacement has been switched off. This just isn't updated for some reason. Interesting. Why is it my? Maybe if I just touch a slider, it will probably. There you go, see? 
So it's turned off displacement mapping and it's turned it into a nice rock. Look at that, nice beautiful rock. And I can now save this rock. So if I select it, um, go right click it and go save object. Okay, so and we're going to go to um, where were we? Personal. Oh, that's right. Um, no. Where was I saving this? View lib 640 lib. Here we go. So let's go. We're going to create a new one called Rocks. Okay, and we're going to call this uh, Brown Rock 1. Okay, I don't want the caps lock on. Brown Rock 1. Cool. I'm going to put in lecture 4 land 6340 2013. Alright. And it's going to make me a little um, preview of it. You can actually, if you right click in here, you can move this around so you get the sort of look you want. Might just zoom in on that a bit more. Oh, yeah, well, you can even get it to rotate, that's kind of cool. Isn't that an odd sort of shaped rock? It's kind of bizarre. Okay, and you can play around with this. You, know, you can have a checkerboard underneath it and you can edit the color map and load in, you know, different. Yeah. Ooh. It's just uniform. Cool. Okay, maybe look at it from that side. It should be able to. Come on. No. Yeah, hold in the shift and right, and you can move it. I don't know what would happen if you lost what you're looking at. It might be quite difficult anyway. Cool. Okay, so there's our, our rock. The lovely green. Actually, I might just move that up on the on the view a bit. Cool. And you hit OK. And we've saved our rock. And it even says brown rock one. So now when we go into load an object, we can actually load that library of rocks. So we go open. Cool. And then call it land 6340 rocks okay and I've got a rock library cool pretty neat eh? I should still have my original yeah I've still got the original one as well I don't know what would happen if I applied the same material to it nothing I suppose it's trying to displace the surface of the I don't know anyway actually now if I hit render yeah it would have had a big effect um, but we can go around making lots of rocks, of course, because I can just grab these rocks and whoopsies, and move them. Yeah. Sometimes it's easier just to do that in here. Where are we? There we go. Cool. Yeah, let's look at that rock. Do you look cool? Yeah, another funky looking rock. Not bad, kind of looks like it's all coming out of the centre though. And what we do, remember, right click on it. Oops. Right click on it. Objects, bake to polygons. Well, we do not want a two and a half million polygon rock. Okay, if we went really simple, yeah, oh, it's only going to let us go down to 9,600. It's just going to look quite faceted. Okay, it's going to have kind of sharp edges, but I mean, even it's actually even at that resolution, it still looks good because it's relatively smooth rock anyway. We can see it's looking pretty cool, and these will render a lot faster than um, than the um, displaced surface ones because it doesn't have to calculate the surface anymore. Okay, and you can even change the material on that and do it if you like. Okay, all right, we can get. You can name that, you know, Brown Rock 2 or something. Come on. Still 
the thing. There we go. Brown rock. Do. Head okay. Oh, and I'm gonna right click. And object save object. Cool. Brown rock two, yep. Don't be lazy and just go copy paste. Yet another lecture for rock. I'll do. Okay, again, I might want to just kind of get a similar view as to what I got last time. Hold down the shift key, shift and right mouse click. There we go. Get a little bit more. Yeah, come on. Right click, shift right, shift right click. I'm saying, but I'm not doing it. Okay, and so there's another rock. Cool. Okay. Excellent. So, on to the next thing. Um, hopefully we're not going over time. The next thing I want to talk about is hyperblobs. Now, hyperblobs are actually a combination of a lot of the things that we've seen. They've definitely got their advantages and their disadvantages. So I'm just going to create a totally new scene here. I'm just going to a new default scene. Um, yeah, don't save this. And what we're going to do is we're just going to create, um, we'll create a sphere again. Okay, and we'll do this pretty much the same way we did with the rest of them. So here's our sphere. Okay, it's quite large, doesn't matter. And we're going to go object, um, create hyperblob. And we do want to replace materials with the default hyper texture. It's very important that we do this, otherwise nothing will happen. All right, and if we render this immediately, you will see we get quite an interesting looking rock. Now what this is actually doing is it's using a whole bunch of um, stuff that we've already seen. So it's just like um, a meta blob and that we can keep adding stuff to this. Yeah, I am going to talk a little bit about a different type of material again as well actually in a sec. So if we go and grab, you know, this big sphere. All right. Okay, we can put that into the same group. Oh. Yes, replace the materials. Okay, and we should end up with an even bigger rock. The cool thing with this is that um, it updates in the here, really cool. The really stink thing is though, is that we can't bake it to polygons for some reason. It's not an option, I do not know why, but it kind of sucks because sometimes these can take ages to render. You wouldn't want like a whole scene. It means that you couldn't create like an ecosystem that populated your scene with these or anything like that. So it's, yeah, it's a bit of a bummer. Um, I don't think if you right click on it, can you go save object? Oh, you can. Interesting. So it would save it out, which would be good. Okay, so let's just have a good old play with this. Let's go in here. What it's actually doing, actually, I'll, I might just do this to off to the side for a second. Um, we'll just have a look at volume. Where are we? Let me put them over there. Volume materials. So if we go in here, we've seen simple materials. Mixed materials. <laughs> mixed materials um, are just a, comp uh, a combination of two different materials based on certain rules like you know height or slope. We'll, we'll talk about this in the future. Um, we had a very brief look at ecosystems, but there's this other one called volumetric materials, and it's got a few different methods. We use it for all sorts of stuff. You can see um, here, actually, I'm just going to delete this blob just so I don't have to render it. Okay, and we'll just look at that a bit closer. All right, so we get this hazy disk. A volume material is a little bit different, so it's not so much that you're rendering a surface and an effect on that surface, we're actually rendering well, a volume. So it's kind of like a hazy cloud or something like that. Not a very impressive looking one. I've also got shaded, so you can see there's some internal shadowing going on. Okay. Um, we've got additive, which we saw when we were talking about the materials um, last week. And these are good for yeah, doing lighting effects, that sort of carry on. 
um, sometimes beams of light underwater. Um, volume shaded, and um, this one's a little bit more interesting. We can um, increase its diffuse and ambient and that sort of carry on. But what we're actually really interested in is hypertexture. Now, a hypertexture, for one, needs um, a density. So let's just go and load a function in here. So um, we're just going to load in a basic fractal just to speed this up. You can see, actually, that. Hang on. Actually, we'll just we'll just drop the overall density. This should should work. I think this is a little bit too noisy. Yeah, let's go edit this function. Um, we'll change this just to the fast. Um, now, what was it the for your fast Perlin fractal? Just because we've got familiar with it. We'll reduce the largest feature, increase the gain. Oh, sorry, actually, I'll increase it a bit. There we go. So we've got something, yeah, nice and chunky. All right, that okay. That's looking pretty cool. Let's just drop this overall density down. Actually, I think my gain's a bit too high. I think it's probably just peaking it out. Let's just drop this down until we get. Yeah, that's looking cool. A little bit more. Yeah, there we go. All right. Now look at this. Look what's happening. Is it's kind of like um, producing this weird sort of. Well, it's a volume material. It's kind of where it's um, white. You got to remember that um, the the fractal isn't just two dimensional. It's three dimensional. So these are like big. This is kind of like looking inside that fractal, and where all the white bits are, we're actually seeing a surface. Okay, so it's quite different to like a bump map or something like that. It's quite interesting. So our hyperblobs, going back to that, um, let's just reset this material. Okay, and we'll hit that hyperblob again. Yes, replace the material. Okay, the hyperblob is using that, um, like a metablob and a volume material to produce a rock. Pretty cool. And so we can actually see, and here we've got, um, here's the density production. If we go and have a look in here, you can see it's got a whole bunch of stuff. We can delete all this, of course. And again, let's go and create our own. Okay, and you can use all sorts of features and functions, and I, I totally encourage you to play around with it. Not even just the straight, simple fractals working quite nice. Okay, let's go back to um, our fast Perlin. Cool. And what's neat, again, you could actually make this so that you can see it updates. That's looking kind of cool. Now it has actually got a feature which is usually on by default. Let's go OK to that. So if we go Command E is the easiest. Um, it's got this thing where it's keeping the biggest chunks. So if you remember when we saw that um, volumetric um, material, there was lots of little pieces just all floating around the place. Did that work? Oh, okay, it was just strange coincidence, but I haven't got any other little chunks. We can also change this to um, world standard, of course. And let's increase this overall density. Okay, see how we're getting these little pieces just floating around? Okay, which, if we're trying to make a rock, obviously having pieces floating in space isn't really all that cool. Well, unless we were floating in space, then that would be cool. Okay, so when we go and turn on that feature to keep the largest, largest chunk, command E, it'll get rid of that piece. Okay, in fact, we'll see that up here now. Right. For some reason, it really loves you to say, OK. Come on. Doesn't want to update. It's assuming that I haven't done anything. Okay, so we can see that piece has disappeared. Another cool thing with these is that we don't have to use the material. It's slightly different to how we normally work, but if you have a look in here, okay, um, we've got the hypertexture material. So this is the actual material. So if you go in here and get edit material, you'll see it's actually got its own you know, color production and everything. So we can replace this with whatever we like. 
So we could go in here and say, well, we could use this one, but that would be a kind of a little bit weird because then we're putting a displaced material on top of this already complex form. So we probably don't want to do that. Uh, but we have got a few things in here. Let's see. How about rocks? Grey rock. Okay, let's just load that in. Okay, and we've got now a grey rock. And of course we can come in here and play around with all the settings. If we go into colour and density, we can play around with this, maybe make it a little less dense. We should see it a bit smaller now. Okay, or go the other way, we'll make it bigger. Okay, to the point that it's too big. The quality boost, as we've seen in lots of places now, is going to dictate how um, much geometry is in there really. So if we go and increase it, we'll see um, a much more refined surface. We shouldn't get any funny little jaggedy bits. Um, I'm just going to leave that on one. Oh, sorry, on zero. Actually, another cool thing, of course, what we can do. Right, this material editor seems to be a lot more responsive when you double click on it. We, oh, we have already changed it to world standard. So that means that if I go and move this around, I'll get a different version of this rock until I like it. Okay, and each time it's going to be slightly different. So if I go and um, you know, move a copy of it, I'm going to get a different rock. And of course, because it's kind of like a meta blob, I can add other geometry to it. So I can go and grab a you know, nice big cube here, pop that in there. Drag them into my hyper blob. Yes, replace the materials, please. Interesting. Why did it disappear? I have to play around with my density function. And to ching. Okay, so we can produce some pretty cool looking rocks. But yeah, as I said, big disadvantage is that you can't bake it to polygons, which yeah, kind of sucks. Um, and we can do subtractive stuff on here, I think, as well. Yep, we can do additive, subtractive. We can change the envelope distance and how much effect it has on it. Um, this hypertexture baking, um, this is quite handy. If you go and reduce this right down, so let's say, in fact, let's go to 20, right? What it means is that in here it will update really fast. If you've got a slow computer and you just want to see how this is changing, you'll see that it updates much, much quicker. Oops, I'm moving just the cube. I'm going to move the whole lot, really. Okay. But you probably find that you will have to increase that um, when you get a render because otherwise it ends up oversimplifying it. Oh, oversimplifying the geometry. Alright. Okay, command E. Go in the other direction. So let's bump it up to about 200. Cool. Rotate this around a little bit to get quite a close look at it. And we'll do a nice good render. And we'll leave it at that. Um, anyway, so um, I'm going to set the assignment now. I'll do it in a separate video, um, which I don't know if you've already watched it or not, quite possibly. Um, but it's going to be about building up a library of materials and objects and stuff using techniques that we've used in the last couple of weeks, and then incorporating them all into one nice scene. Um, and you can do multiple renders. In fact, I'd like to see a couple of extra renders in there. Um, on all of your objects and um, materials, I'd like you to you know, go, give them a good description, um, describe what they are, how you did it, any cool features about them. And um, we're going to put that all into a nice little folder, and you can submit that to um, to Dropbox, uh, sorry, to Moodle in a zipped file. But I'll describe it, all the intricacies of that in um, the assignment one um, video. Anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, next week we're going to be talking a lot about ecosystems and um, importing those and um, advanced objects. Or I might possibly change my mind and talk about importing um, objects. Alright, until then, I'll catch you later.